My name is Lori McLeod Chabagishik, and uh, my Anishinaabe name is uh, Mermaid, or Lady of the Water. And I am originally from Chiging. I have I have also been living, I'm also a member of the uh, Nipissing First Nation, and I've lived here for 30 years. I guess what's important to me and the next generation is the recognition of Anishinaabe no ways of, of knowing and seeing. From our perspective, we have uh, actually, um, we've divided it up into about seven ways of knowing. And in our knowledge, one, it starts out with the importance of, uh, of our language. And that's uh, our original way of speaking. It's how we communicate with the Creator and um, with spirit and with one another. And it also contains how we view and interact with the world. I used to look back on Native um, Native role models like Sitting Bull, and just hearing the eloquence of their words, like how how incredibly eloquent they were in imparting their their knowledge and wisdom. And as I began to learn the language, I realized that a lot of that was embedded in the language itself. For example, when we look at words like "mean um, dogse," uh, which is uh, commonly recognized to mean the word for miracle. But what it really means is that which is not possible without spirit intervention. So when we look at our own words and the direct translation of the meaning, not just the English translation, I'm talking about what the words actually mean. There's so much beauty in there and there's so, uh, so much knowledge. And so to me, Anishinaabe Bivouin is one of the critical factors of Indigenous education, as well as uh, Anishinaabe Anadzuin. And not the Zuin. And what that is is our behavior. For it contains our, our values and our way of living life and being a Nishnabe in the fullest sense. It's the uh, it's the development of the highest quality of a Nishnabe personhood. It uh, talks about our connection to the earth and uh, our relationship to all of creation. So how we conduct ourselves, how we treat each other, how we interact with our um, with Mother Earth and, and all of creation. And then the third one is uh, Anishinaabe and then the Mowin, which was our own way of thinking, our way of perceiving and formulating thought, resonating from our Anishinaabe beliefs and foundational truths. So it's our, uh, our philosophy and our worldview. And the fourth one is Anishinaabe Gikindasuin, which is our knowledge and our way of knowing. It's the uh, body of knowledge that informs us of our original teachings, our way of life, and our way of being and our worldview. Indigenous people are the only nation of people in the world who have been able to live in balance with, with Mother Earth. And that's so powerful. We, uh, the Creator has given us those gifts so that we know how to uh, nurture her and, and live in balance. And that's one of our... our critical um, contributions to the world, what we have to offer. When we look at Anishinaabe Zhichigewin, it's our way of doing things. It's our way of taking action with the life skills we need as Anishinaabe people to live effectively in the world and contribute to, the, to building a quality of living and quality of community. There is this big push for people to live independently, but as Anishinaabe people, we've always um, lived interdependently, where every single person has a contribution to make. And our survival as a people is based upon everyone's ability to be um, valued, protected, respected, and supported in that circle so that we all use our gifts to the best of our ability to support one another and so that our uh, our people can can thrive and continue to to move forward into the into the future. We also have Anishinaabe 
and Awenduin, which is our, our way of relating to spirit, to each other and to all of creation. It is an inclusive relationship that honors the interconnectedness of all our relations and recognizes the and honors the human place and responsibility within the family of creation. And then we have Gadakimanan, which is our connection and our relationship to the land and all of creation. It is the experience of knowing and understanding the relationships that exist throughout creation and understanding our own role and responsibility in this relationship. This connection is the primary shaper of Anishinaabe identity, and it is the total relationship with creation that forms our environmental ethic. And so each of these, each of these seven classifications is, is not only critical to our, our livelihood, but it's also critical to our contributions to the world. And so when we look at Anishinaabe education, uh, those are those are fundamental to our to our own well-being and uh, protecting our our indigenous identities. Specifically, in the work that I do, I mainly work with uh, prenatal groups and I work with uh, families of children with special needs. And so, when I work with prenatal groups, a lot of the things that we talk about are things to do with healthy pregnancies. And it always amazes me what our people knew long before Western medicines. And one of the things that we knew was that um, babies begin to uh, retain memory, have the ability to re retain memory at three months in utero. And so because of this, our people have always regarded pregnancy as, as being sacred and the um, expectant moms were always very well protected and, and shielded from any kind of stressors or, or negative impacts. They were always uh, there, uh, were supported to have the best in nutrition and things like that because our people knew that that impacted her baby and would uh, have the potential to affect them for the rest of their lives. So good nutrition meant um, a good start for babies. And not only that, um, physiologically, when a woman is carrying a female child, the word for uh, our for woman is quet, and the word for a um, uh, a small female child is quesence. And what that means is little woman. And a part of that comes from our teachings where our female children are born with all of the eggs that they will ever carry. And so they are in fact born intact. They may be small and, and have to and have growing to do, but the entirety of their being is already there. And so when a woman is carrying a female child, this female child is already uh, carrying the eggs for her children. And so as the expectant mom, we not only have the ability to uh, affect the well-being of our children, but we're also carrying our grandchildren as well. So it's really important that we, um, we nurture their development. In our genetic material, uh, in every cell of our body, almost every cell of our body, there's an exact replica of us and 20,000 of our ancestors who came before us which means that we also have, um, uh, we hear a lot of talk about, uh, you know, genetic memory and, and um, you know, trauma through DNA, but we also carry that uh, genetic wisdom as well. And we have healers and traditional teachers in our communities who have the ability to teach us how to access that genetic memory which exists within all of us. So we not only have the ability to draw upon our own knowledge, but we also have the ability to draw on the knowledge of our ancestors. And so that's part of the teachings and abilities that we carry as Anishinaabe people. In my work with, uh, with children with special needs, we talk a lot about um, traditional foods. Our people have always known how to eat strategically and we all we always have done so throughout, uh, especially in pregnancy. For example, when a, uh, a woman was pregnant, she would have uh, first um, 
whenever there was a fresh kill, she would have first pick of the organs. So things like the, you know, the liver, the heart, and things like that. And so our people knew that they were nurturing her um, her, her iron development and building up her, her body and her strength for childbirth. But one of the things that we've always done is that in the third month of pregnancy, our people would ensure that uh, our expectant moms would eat um, a lot of um, heavy fish, like white fish or sturgeon, things with... Um, omega-3s in them and uh, in doing so our people knew that baby's brain was going through a growth spurt in that third trimester so when she was eating those those fish oils we were actually nurturing our baby's development so we also used food in that way to uh, nurture healthy brain development but now Western medicine is just starting to recognize the teachings that our people have always carried and they're encouraging people to uh, give omega-3s to uh, children with special needs to help nurture their development so that they can retain memory, so they can um, retain what it is that they've learned and, and all of those different things. So those are the types of things that we, uh, we talk about in, in our program. in terms of, uh, of knowledge. But I guess one of the most important things to me personally is the importance of uh, engaging the spirit. And by that I mean that um, we're learning a lot about, you know, science and technology, but even technology needs a spirit to carry it. And within our our spirit is our our ethics, our identity. It's it's all how we interact with all of creation, especially the spirit realm. I think that's one of the most important things about us is that in our belief system, nothing ever comes to an end. You know, it just it merely changes form. If you look at something like um, water you know if you boil it and it evaporates it becomes a gas and it's still uh it's it's still you know um goes on to exist if we if it turns into ice then it just merely changes form and so i think that's um very critical in terms of how we look at that we too are forever a part of creation and our people who have uh, gone on to the spirit realm whose, whose, whose spirits have uh, uh, transcend, transcended into that realm that a part of them still is still here and with us and um, you know when we go outside and we spend time uh, upon the land then we have the ability to to connect with them you know to um, as their physical bodies, you know, nurture the, the land, the trees, the, um, the flowers, that when we sit outside on our lands, that we are, um, we're breathing them in and we still have the, have the ability to, to carry them with us and to communicate with them. So to me, uh, in terms of Anishinaabe education, we need to nurture those, those teachings and those beliefs. I think that, um, I think it's really critical that all aspects of Anishinaabe people, uh, Anishinaabe education, be developed by Anishinaabe people for Anishinaabe people, and that um, when it comes to issues um, like holding uh, copyright, uh, that that's also critical. That we own our own knowledge because um, right now that's. Um, it's often too exploited, and uh, I see a lot of movement in, in research to uh, to protect our knowledge. So that's always that's a good thing for sure. I see a lot of things happening, uh, a lot of exciting things happening under the Anishinaabeg education system, where we are taking control over our own education and our future by developing our own uh, level of um, excellence an accreditation for our, our programs and how our students are taught and, and treated and nurtured. Uh, so that's, um, you know, our own curriculum development. So to me, that's, uh, that's pretty exciting.
one of my concerns um, is that, you know, in the work that I do, I see a lot of women doing really well. I see a lot of women uh, uh, getting their college education, getting their university degrees, but I don't see as many young men um, doing as well. I'm not sure if it is a, uh, a maturity issue or if they're just not as well supported, but we don't have nearly as many uh, young male graduates as we uh, as we do women. And so I think we need to find ways to support our young men, to help them to pursue their dreams and to be successful academically. You know, we do have a lot of really uh, great graduates, but I think that, um, that that's one area in particular that we really need to focus on. I guess in terms of um, progress, just for more of our people to become engaged in the process, because this is a, such a critical issue, for people to really pay attention and to uh, think about what it is that that they want for their children and to help to nurture that development. Uh, and um, we're on a, a precipice here where we have we don't have as many fluent speakers as we used to and to me that's of critical concern because they are um, they carry such valuable knowledge that in sometimes i feel that we are um, we're running out of time as they get older so we need to um support them as much as as we can you know support support their well-being but also engage them in terms engage our elders and engage our our fluent language speakers in what they regard as important for our for our youth and to um support our children in in helping them to um to see our culture and our teachings as being uh important to them and their identity uh, we need to. We really need to nurture their self-esteem, so that they can be able to see beyond the stereotypes, and to really think about what it means to be an Ishnabe, so they can, you know, um, be confident in in who they are and uh, feel good about who we are as a people.